Grr, reading some caffeine rage and welcome back to the Sunday Sampler. This week we're taking a look at Crazy Machines 3, a Rube Goldberg puzzle game by Fox Software, and yes, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, and published by Daedric Entertainment. This is obviously the third incarnation of the Crazy Machines series, and uh, actually a worthy successor to Crazy Machines 2. Uh, Crazy Machines 2, uh, by the same developer, I might add. I actually, I didn't check to see if it was the same publisher. I should have checked that. Had an absolute ton of content, and this is the 1.0.1 uh, version. This is the uh, just after the first post-launch uh, patch, which added a fast-forward feature and also reduced some RAM usage. So this isn't quite the launch version, but we'll take a look at it nonetheless. We'll dive into the campaign. There's 80 levels. But before we do that, I'm going to take a look at the editor, which is under invent. Uh, seven different uh, areas to invent in, and we'll just grab the canyon. Uh, I'm not going to take a too in-depth look at the editor, just because it is rather intense, and there's a lot to do here. Just uh, beyond inventing stuff and making your own machines. If you wish to do that, you can also build parts and put them on the Steam Workshop, which we'll take a look at the workshop content and uh, towards the end of the video, just to show you how things go there. You can see a sh uh, add new part from the Steam Workshop right there. But we'll just go ahead and look at all parts, which I don't have any workshop parts on my ad. And this is, well, uh, it would help if I didn't start scroll down. This is all the stuff that you have in the game just at launch, which there are promises of post-launch uh, content and uh, patches. You see also some chips to, uh, to add some more toys as well. A lot of stuff to do. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, we'll just go ahead and grab this and just scroll a little bit faster. I do like the idea that their logic chips are going to add a lot of uh, just craziness to the workshop items and just Continue scrolling, continue scrolling. Grand, some of this is scenery, which may be padding this out a little bit, but not too much. And you can also, I will just put something there just to show you. Oh, it wouldn't help if I didn't put it out of bounds. You can also change the materials, make it a balloon, make it metal, which changes the properties of different things. And there's also painting, uh, you know, painting in red wouldn't really help when it's already red, but there's a lot to do in the editor. And I'm, like I said, I'm not going to go too in depth on this just because I haven't done enough time in the editor to really do it justice, but it is here and there's a, a fair amount of workshop content already, which the game's only been out a couple days. So we'll just go back to the main menu and take a look at the campaign. And you can see I've actually kept the paintbrush. It's still, this is just an overlay on the, uh, the machine. It will go away once I uh, start up a machine. And I've, I've already done the intro. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. But I haven't I've beaten all of this yet. And I'm only up to the medium uh, puzzles. I still have hard, which each of these require solving three in each chapter, which is actually not that bad. It, uh, there are seven puzzles here. Uh, damn it, I keep doing that. There's uh, another seven there, and there's six there. So you need to solve half of the Ace Engineer and under half of the Problem Solver and Machine Whiz puzzles. Not bad. So let's just go ahead and dive into the introductory levels. I do not want to save that. And we'll go, just go ahead and change a flat tire to just show you how things go. Uh, and you can see this is 3D. Well, uh, this is actually 2.5D uh, just from the camera, but the editor does allow full 3D, which is going to be fun once uh, there's some more uh, work on it. So we'll just go ahead and just quickly solve this since I've already done this. You may be able to see, I'll zoom in a little bit. Everything is snapping to a grid. You, Hopefully you can see that fairly well, which does take a little bit of the pixel hunting out of the genre because that's one problem that uh, these games have is just the pixel hunting for, to solve some puzzles. 
which it's taken out here, but it also limits uh, the amount of uh, solvable uh, solutions that you have, uh, especially with just the limited number of parts. There's going to be only so much that you could do here. Not a crying shame, but at the same time, it's something that I wish was a little different. So let's see, do I need another domino somewhere? Okay, let's just go ahead and put that there. And we'll try that. And, oh, that's where I did the other domino. See, you can't really skip out on parts in this uh, game. At least in the easy puzzles. It may change in the very difficult puzzles, and I, I just haven't gotten there yet. And there we go. And a lot of the puzzles have these little post uh, uh, solve uh, animations or uh, effects. This isn't a particularly good one to show. We'll just hop over to Ace Engineer and let's take a look here. I haven't done any of these puzzles, so we'll solve this in real time as we talk a little bit more. Let's do Sky Dunker. Let's take a look at this. I have no idea what this is going to entail. Let's see. Somebody told me that uh, uh, that basketball is popular even above the clouds, but it doesn't look like there are any fans that have made their way up here. Slam uh, one into the hoop, and I'm sure that it will get their attention. Now, because of how the game is built, uh, this is actually a bad puzzle to show this. Some parts will go behind others, and if you're looking straight on like this, it's not apparent what parts are in the background, which can be a little bit of a pain in the ass, to be perfectly honest. Let's just go ahead and start this to see what goes on. what. Okay, so score with the green basketball, not this one. So let's see what we could do here. Now the problem here is that because we have limited parts and they are all snapping to this grid and also uh, static, uh, there's really only one solution to this. You may be able to get away with uh, a little bit of free uh, will with uh, a little bit of placement, but you're not going to get much. So let's see. That there, that should support that. With like that. Now see, looking straight on, it looks like this half of the puzzle and this half of the puzzle is segregated. But if you tilt the camera ever so slightly, you see that this plane is in front of this post. So this should work. So we'll put that there and that there, and we'll try that. Okay, now you see that didn't quite work out, but a lot of what these Rubberg puzzles are is just finding the solution and then tweaking it, which isn't a weakness of uh, the game uh, uh, by a long shot. It's just, you know, having to toy with things. Like, that doesn't work. I don't, that, oh, hang on. There we go. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't work out. So we need this further down to like right here, perhaps. Oh. Yeah, this may be a bit of a tricky one to show just because. Actually, let's try just moving that like that and that means messing with these two a little bit more there we go that should prevent this from uh obstructing and it does and victory see we had the basic idea of uh, at the start but we had to alter it ever so slightly which is oh, that's a rather <laughs> nice little background event which that's a, that's a rather nice field of view effect as well. Granted, zooming in uh, makes it a little bit blocky. Could be done a little bit better, I think. But it's a, a deep thing that, you know, in the background of the puzzles, there's something that goes on at the end, which I really like. 
And as you saw there, the uh, physics look pretty solid to me. The other problem of rather cheaply put together Rube Goldberg machine uh, puzzle games is just the fact that you get bad rats where the puzzles sometimes work with their solutions and other times they don't. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and dive into Machine Wiz and do... Uh, see, I did Couch Potatoes. Let's try a precise shooting, see what that does. Once again, I've, uh, ooh, let's see. Let's uh, practice uh, one last time for our play at the local theater tonight. Uh, use that high tech crossbow to ensure a precise shot. We don't want any. Uh, we didn't have any apples, but that kettle should uh, make an adequate target. Okay. I do miss the voiceover at the beginning of the levels. Granted, I think a lot of people skip those, so maybe it's you know not really necessary. But at the same time, it's a nice little touch. So let's see. Let's just uh, hit start to see what happens. Okay, we need something there. Will this work? Yes, it does. Okay, and that requires light to uh, grow. I do wish that the items had a little bit more uh, uh, info about them. Just, yo. Know, this is nice, but you know, it's not quite enough. Maybe I'm just being a bit of a pain in the ass on that. Okay, so. Huh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, we need something here. Which is likely that. Let's just zoom in to make sure. Get that placed uh, well. Okay, that should work. I'll go here, hit that. Which will punch that, knock that out. And I think we need a weight here. And we'll see. Yeah, that is being very, very <laughs> tight with the physics engine there, but it works. Okay, that goes down. Punch. Whoops. <laughs> I like the sense of humor. There, there's a definite uh, cutesy uh, quality to it, which... Uh, a lot of people could... Uh, uh, cons oh, well, let's get to the chapter select screen just to <laughs> get rid of the siren. A lot of people... Uh, Consider Rube Goldberg machine games, pu uh, puzzle games for kids, which I definitely get because a lot of Rube Goldberg machine uh, games just, they have the difficulty curve either way too easy or way too difficult. And uh, the easy side tends to favor kids and the difficult side tends to be really a pain in the ass because those usually are the ones that the physics don't really quite work out all the time. So let's just go ahead and let's dive into uh, one more of these and we'll kind of start wrapping things up. Blocked entrance. Let's just do the starter of this. Let's see. We need to close an important archaeological discovery, but we need access to the pyramid. Or we are so close to the uh, important archaeological discovery, but we need access to the pyramid entrance. Uh, press the trigger to blast the rocks away. Ooh, that, that has a lot more parts. Yeah, you can see how things are getting a little bit more uh, fun. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just skip out of this just to leave uh, some of the more... Uh, I guess these are... And let's just go ahead and pop into another one of these just to see. I have a feeling these are the more complex. Oh, I was about to say there's a little bit of a weird thing there, but that's a reflection, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like these are the more complex ones. This looks like it has a lot of pulleys and everything going on. Yeah, so we'll just skip out of these just to keep me from looking like too much of a fool. And dive back into the campaign and... Actually, let's take a look at the workshop stuff. I do have a couple of workshop items downloaded. One showing off just, you know, uh, how simple things are. This is a golf course made by someone. Uh, it would have helped if I took a look at the 
uh, the workshop page, but you see some other courses in the background. It's a, a nicely done uh, little one hole thing that uh, is made just a couple of days after the uh, game goes live. So this is a fairly simple puzzle. I mean, there's not a lot here that you could really mess up, at least in theory. Come on, go, 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 go. Yes. <laughs> uh, granted, I did beat that one before just to uh, test it. Well, I did that in a, a previous video that kind of got shelved because I didn't have my cursor being recorded, which is kind of important for this game. So, uh, workshop support uh, already starting to take off, and there it does support... Uh, both parts and full uh, full levels. So I'm hoping that there's going to be a lot of interesting things in the future. Uh, speaking of uh, interesting things in the future, they did promise content updates to this game. So I'm expecting uh, more stuff to be added, uh, hopefully more levels, because while there are 80 levels here, they are, at least in the beginning, uh, creating the problem solvers will probably take longer. Go fairly quickly. So this uh, it has uh, the potential to go fairly quickly, but I'm not 100% sure because I haven't unlocked the hard and the ultra levels, which the ultra levels are there are more of than the hard levels. So hopefully these things are going to be very interesting. And also because there's no hint system, I'm a little leery of these puzzles as well, which was something that hasn't been needed just yet in my gameplay because, you know, looking at how the uh, parts are oriented and how everything goes together, you could usually suss it out, but at the same time, uh, not having a hint system uh, is a little bit troublesome in my opinion. And that's one thing that I do give them uh, bad marks for. Uh, and also things do start off very simple, but this is also just more teaching the basic mechanics. As you go on, you saw how things uh, get more escalated. Uh, and I think that really wraps us up all together. Uh, a worthy successor to Crazy Machines 2 uh, with promises of f content in the future. And if Crazy Machines 2 and 1 is anything to go by, I also expect expansions in the future, So, which will likely add more elements. I know Crazy Machines 2 had a lot of different expansions that added interesting things and I'm expecting really the same from this game, and uh, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff in the future, I believe, especially with the workshop. The workshop has already gotten... Actually, let me take a look at, at present, and let's see if I can... There are only a, really a couple pages worth of stuff, but there's already some fun things, so let's just go ahead and I'll load up the one that I kind of balked at on my previous video. Because I, this is my second attempt at this. Uh, make it blend. Power the blender. And there's a fair number of things here just to try to power this thing. And it's uh, really converting from one power source to another. So you can probably solve it fairly quickly uh, once you figure out all the parts and how they fit together. But it's that initial, uh, you know, kind of, ugh, <laughs> that uh, kind of just puts you off. But then again, there's also... Uh, levels that are just, yeah, just let it run in the background and uh, show off what you could do, which I'm expecting a lot of these uh, to get just absolutely crazy. But yeah, that wraps this up. I'm looking at my notes to see if there's anything else that I'm really missing. Uh, solid physics overall. Uh, more info on the parts would be nice. Uh, does it really offer that much freedom in uh, its solutions, at least in the early game. We'll just go ahead and start this. And, oh, I uh, almost forgot I didn't show this. Here's the controls. Unfortunately, uh, in the 1.0.1 patch, they, well, it is nice that they do have reference guides for everything as well, which goes to the Steam Workshop, unfortunately, which I'm not sure if my recording software is capturing that. Uh, they have all the hotkeys here except fast forward, which for most of the videos, or sorry, most of the levels, not videos, uh, isn't really required. But there's a couple of levels that uh, require a bit of waiting, like that one that had the balls just hanging there for a moment could have been fast forwarded. 
and pressing F fast forwards. Unfortunately, there's no UI element and it's not in the in the hotkeys here that's listed. And these aren't rebondable, of course. So yeah, something that they need to add in the back in a future patch, you know, just another note here that fast forward. And I think that's about it. As always, uh, feedback is appreciated, uh, especially the Sunday sampler, because these are one-offs. But, you know, overall, I could always use feedback. So if you have any constructive feedback, drop that in the comments below, and I'll uh, greatly appreciate it. And if you don't have any feedback, just but just want to let me know that you've enjoyed this anyway, hit the like or even the dislike buttons, because those do help. Even though I do think that if you hated me that much that, to dislike my videos, you wouldn't be th hanging around that long. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? Well, at least hanging around long enough to hear me say dislike my video if you hated this. But yeah, also, yeah, tell me why do you dislike it would be uh, very helpful. And subscribe if you see the uh, well, the rest of the Sunday samplers uh, from the future. Uh, well, to the future, I should say, not from the future, because if they were from the future, that would be very impressive. <laughs> Or my Let's Play content, which I have three series ongoing, which hopefully Jared will be bringing, uh, be coming back next week with a new series there. And of course, the podcast Video Game Logic, which comes out on Fridays at noon. As always, thank you for watching. And as we watch the train go uh, into the track or uh, over the track and into the wall, I will say thank you for watching. And we'll be sampling something next week. But until then, I'll see ya.